Welcome everybody, I'm Blaze with Bob Facts. We've tested over 100 LED kits over the last number of years, and we've narrowed it down to the very best for each application. So if you're looking to install in your high beams, low beams, fog lights, if you have projectors, reflectors, we found the best kit for each specific application and a few different price ranges. As always, links to everything we mentioned in this video here will be linked down in the video description below. So Balfax is an independent testing lab to produce real reviews and recommendations for you guys. And as always, we decline all sponsorship offers to keep the reviews true and unbiased. Our goal is to find the very best product you can buy the first time, saving you time and money. To learn about how we test, you can find a link in the video description below with full details. But in short, we test a few different headlight styles, projectors, reflectors, all at 25 feet and also now factor in the lumens into the score. LEDs have come a long way in the last few years. There's a lot of great products on the market, but we've narrowed it down, so let's jump right into it. Starting off with reflector headlights, we have the LumaBright X-T1 Generation 2 LEDs. At our number one pick, at about $160, they have a three-year warranty, solid tier one quality construction, and a nice clean white color. 5750 Kelvin, so just under 6,000. Head to blue in there. They're also CAN bus compatible, which a lot of newer vehicles use. It also work all the way down to five volts, which is great for people looking to add them into their DRLs or daytime running lights. They produce about three and a half times or 244% more distance at 1,283 lux versus 373 lux for OEM halogen and 577 lux for the best halogen upgrade we've tested, which are the Bosch Gigalite Plus 120%. The theme pattern is also something we like to mention as it's important not to glare at other oncoming cars on the road. The XT1 Gen 2s are near perfect with very minimal glare from our test housings putting down the light where it belongs. We don't recommend anything without an accurate beam. The tested lumens were about 9,280 per kit compared to 3,128 in a standard halogen bulb. Nearly three times the total light output. Another great option at a little bit lower cost are the DDM tuning Sabre Pro X 55 watt LEDs. They're in at a higher wattage, so they have naturally CAN bus compatibility and are dimmable on many vehicles, and thus output over 9,000 stable lumens from our tests. They came in at 1,211 lux, which is just over three times the distance with a near perfect beam pattern. Compatible with most DRL systems and are a great overall semi-budget choice for your halogen reflectors. So there's a few new models to mention. The DDM's coming out with a version 2 of their Sabre Pro X. Uh, as well as Morimoto, they have the two-stroke 2.0s. They're coming out with a new model as well. So be on the lookout for something brand new from both of those companies in the near future. And be sure to check our website for the latest recommendations. As we test, we always put the newest products up. If your budget is a little bit tighter, the Hikari Ultra and the Katanas are a great budget pick. Both tier two kits are great options, which are also very bright. We've shown these in previous videos, but they're still a great product. At 6450K color temperature, with a perfect beam pattern, and will net you 173% more light, or just over two and a half times the distance. An even cheaper option are the Katanas, which were just under two and a half times the distance and 5950K color temperature. So a little bit warmer with a near perfect beam pattern. Katana sit around $50 on Amazon and are essentially the best overall budget value you can buy.
Now when it comes to upgrading your high beams in a reflector, the results aren't as nearly as great as a low beam. So if you're on a toss up between low beams, high beams, definitely go for your low beams first. That's your main running light. You're always gonna have them on, obviously. But your high beams, now high beams are a higher wattage bulb that comes in the application, whereas a low beam, you're typically 55 watts for the halogen, and a high beam is typically 65 watts. So, you know, the manufacturers can produce a little bit higher wattage and a high beam. So when you move over to LED in your high beam, you're gonna see a, still a great improvement, about two times the light output for the better kits versus, you know, three to three and a half times or more for your low beams. So the benefits are definitely still there. Better color temperature, maximum output, and of course, more light and more distance. The top performing kits again are the LumaBright X-T1 G2s uh, for the high beam, as well as the Sabre Pro X 55 watts that we showed you for the low beams. Same recommendations there, they performed just as well in the high beams as they did in the low beams. If spending $150 or more on a high beam isn't your thing, and I definitely get it, going with a cheaper alternative can still be a great way to upgrade the light output when it's needed. After all, some of us don't use our high beams much while others may live in the country and need that extra light output. So first up are the Allo Lighting FLBH. They produce 98% more distance over halogen at a nice pure white color of 5350 Kelvin. Great quality are around $80, but only come with a one year warranty. For an extreme budget option, go with the J87 G8 lighting kit. It's available on eBay. For only $45, they produce an outstanding 107% more distance and coming at 4450 Kelvin, which is unheard of in the aftermarket LED options and match close to an OEM xenon bulb in fact. The G8s may be the best option for most people who don't want to use their high beams much, but want an instant on beam and a wider color temperature without getting into the blue territory. Now on to halogen style projector low beam headlights. Many vehicles we see come with projectors these days and the benefit to projector is that they can throw light much further versus a reflector. So following the same trend as our reflector low beam headlights are the LumaBright G2 as well as the DDM Sabre Pro 55 watt LED bulbs. Both are insanely bright in our strict projector tests at 165% and 143% additional light in the low beams respectively about two and a half times the distance to compared to a halogen bulb. They're the top rated for high beam results as well at around 50% additional light, which is oddly as high as we have seen. So if you're looking to upgrade a LED high beam projector specifically, LEDs just don't perform as well in a high beam projector. But if you have a bi-halogen projector, you don't have to worry about it. If you have a strict high beam projector, then I would skip the LED upgrade and just stick with halogen. Beam patterns are very good, but with all LED products, produce a small dark spot in the lower center. To overcome this, go with an HID conversion instead. You can check out our latest video on HID recommendations here, and we'll put a link in the video description below. Just like our last video, the Katanas still take the number one spot for the best budget pick for a projector setup. With our latest lab testing, you'll see about 123% further distance in the main beams, over two times further visibility, and a very respectable 29% higher visibility in the high beams. The Katanas make up for any shortcoming with their generous 7,680 total lumens per kit. Compare that to a halogen bulb at 3128 lumens for a set, and you gain nearly two and a half times the total light output. Katana's put out just under 6,000 Kelvin at 5950K color temperature, are CAN bus ready, and hold a one year warranty. Just keep them out of your DRLs as we could not get them to dim down in our tests. Well, we haven't completed our projector specific fog light tests yet, we do have recommendations for reflector style fog lights. So first up are the DDM Tuning Sabre Pro 50 watt model. We especially love these fog lights due to the extreme high lumen count in addition to the high lux numbers, as well as a perfect color temperature of 5250 Kelvin. They averaged at 712 lux from our three spot testing versus 303 lux from an OEM halogen bulb. That amounts 135% more distance from your fogs and lumens came in at an astonishing 12,200 for the two versus 10,000 from DDM's claim. 
So we love to see when the claims are over in lumens versus way under like a lot of the other products typically are. It's quite incredible and it gives you a lot more light to the sides of your vehicle. The beam was good with minimal glare from our tests. They run at just about $130, are Canvas compatible, DRL compatible, simply an amazing value for what you get. If you don't have the funds for a $130 fog light set, check out the Cougar Motor X Small. It produced an average of 647 lux, which is 114% over halogen, over two times the distance, and coming in at about $40 for a set. Color isn't bad at 6050 Kelvin, but we prefer the warmer color from the DDMs for fog light applications. So that's it for the recommendations. A few things we wanted to mention was heat buildup. A lot of people ask, will the LEDs be too hot in my headlight? And simply the answer is no. Uh, LEDs have a fan on them in order to keep the diodes as cool as possible. A halogen will typically run 160, 180 degrees in your headlight, whereas an LED will run closer to 100, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You're really going down in temperature versus up. Even at a higher wattage, say you get an LED kit that's produced, you know, the DDM's 55 watt kit, which are close to 55 watts, and actually higher than a halogen bulb will pull, 55 watt halogen bulb will pull, closer to around 50 watts typically. But you're pulling more watts from the LED in, in some rare cases and it's still a much cooler temperature based on the technology. So the fan is simply to keep the diodes as cool as possible in order to maximize output out of your LEDs. Even in a sealed beam, go ahead and close that cap up. You don't want that cap off of your headlights. You don't want dust and debris getting in there. The LED fan is going to keep the air actually moving better than a, and than a halogen in fact. Um, so your headlight's going to be much cooler. Another point we want to bring up is the beam pattern. When you're installing the LEDs, make sure you check the beam pattern prior to installing them. So your leave your halogen in there, pull it up inside of your garage or up to a wall, mark it with some masking tape, the top of the beam pattern, and then go ahead and install your LED and recheck that beam. Make sure it's not higher than that masking tape was. Uh, make sure you don't have blotchy output and if you do you'll want to go ahead and clock them correctly so they match the original halogen beam pattern that was on there or at least close to it they're going to be obviously brighter higher intensity so you might get a stronger hot spot but they should still be pretty accurate in most cases you don't need to clock or adjust leds you just install them just like you did with the halogen but in some cases if you do need to make that adjustment it's important to do so so you're not glaring at other drivers out there so we mentioned this on some of the other products already can bus what does that mean can bus is basically the vehicle computer system that checks to see if the bulb is functioning okay. If your halogen bulb goes out, it doesn't have any resistance and that sends a signal and then in your dash it says, hey, your headlight bulb is out, your fog light bulb is out. Now, whereas an LED, a lot of the LEDs will run at a lower wattage so they'll pull a lot less so it's not within that range anymore that the computer is looking for but a lot of leds come with a resistor inside of the driver which helps to trick the computer does it, it does an okay job of it if you have a european vehicle a newer american vehicle a lot of them now are coming with higher tech computer systems that are checking so you want to pick, go ahead and pick up a set of decoders or anti-flicker modules whatever you want to call them they're basically capacitors inside that little decoder or anti-flicker module that tricks the computer so it builds up a charge and then it sends it back to the computer system say hey this is actually okay right so your led doesn't have the ability whereas the decoder will help it help trick it into thinking that everything is okay in addition it actually helps provide a smoother voltage to the leds because vehicles voltage systems run off alternators they go up and down and that could cause issues with the led like flickering so the decoders will actually help so i hope this video is helpful guys if you're unsure on what to do what type of headlights your vehicle has uh, what technologies are what, go ahead and check out our website, bulbfacts.com forward slash help. We wrote up an article. We keep it up to date with recommendations and uh, how to's. You can leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer. We're always enhancing our tests and updating our recommendations. So be sure to check our website, the recommended page, LED specifically, uh, charts if you want to get all the facts and details. And you can also find other specific things like 
will this function as a DRL? Will it trigger an error in my computer system? Is it CAN bus compatible? And so on. If you guys have any suggestions for products you'd like to see tested, go ahead and drop us a line, leave a comment below, and we'll be sure to add it to our product list for future testing. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.